Hello and welcome to West Bloomfield 911. I'm Officer Rick and on behalf of Chief Michael Patton and the men and women of the police department, we are glad you are joining us once again. Now before we go to our corner spotlight, which we hope you thoroughly enjoy, we introduce our guest and she is Jennifer Moore. She's the program director from the Yatuma Foundation for the Kids. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. It's finally good to put a face to the voice yeah. because we've spoken on the phone quite yeah. a bit. It's nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Now, don't run away. Okay. We're going to uh, highlight an individual in the police department. So, folks, look on your screen, and you will see the smiling face of dispatcher Jason Herr. Jason's one of the good young guys in the department. He's been with us now for five years. But originally, Jason came in in 2008 as a cadet. And he switched to dispatch in 2012. Now, I don't get to see Jason much because he's on midnights, and uh, as long as he's on midnights, I don't want to see them. Because if I'm on midnights, it means I've done something wrong. So Jason's a good kid. We're glad to have him. He's a hard worker. And uh, for an older guy, knowing that we're in good hands with these young people makes me feel quite, quite good. When I asked Jason what his favorite, favorite food was, he said French fries. Not French fries and hamburgers or French fries and anything else. Just French fries. So Jason, I, uh, I kind of like those myself, especially when they're fresh and piping hot. His favorite book, the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Jason, you have a lot in common with my children, especially my daughters, they love those books. Favorite movie, Iron Man in 2008, starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jeff Bridges. You know, Jason, I believe we had another one recently. One of our other employees has said he liked that movie as well, so maybe you two can get together. And the favorite music, alternative rock. So he's kind of into the modern stuff with the movies and music. And as far as his accomplishments and hobbies, he said he loves swimming and just loves being in the water. And I gotta tell you, that's what I like doing about these uh, corner spotlights is I did not know that till he and I spoke, but he really enjoys that. And I asked him for a quote and he would throw me a curve. He had to give me one in Latin, carpe diem, which means seize the day. And uh, it's actually from the odes written by Horace, and he knew that, so I'm quite impressed. And it was actually a Roman lyric poem written during the time of Augustus. So, Jason, you're a bright kid. We're glad to have you, and uh, you take care, be safe, and I hope you have a long and illustrious career here in West Bloomfield. Folks, we're going to turn the corner spotlight off, and we're going to go to our tip of the day. Now, one of the biggest crimes in West Bloomfield is larcenies from autos. It's very common. We have a lot of those, but you know that's something you can do something about. Please, do not keep something in your car that you don't want stolen. If you are going to keep it in your car, please keep it in the trunk, and don't put it in the trunk when you get home because if you pop that trunk in your driveway and someone's watching your neighborhood, they're going to see where you put it and they now know where to go shopping. So if you have something of value, put it in your trunk before you get to your destination, before you get home, and then just go in the house. But my advice is don't leave something in the car that you don't want taken. If you have something in your car and you can, please park in the garage, that's what it's there for. If you can't, then of course that's something different. But park in the garage, don't keep anything of value in your vehicle. If you do, keep it in the trunk. Put it there before you reach your destination. And if you have uh, lights around your house and your property is well lit, that also goes towards the deterring people from breaking in your cars. If you're at a uh, mall, please, again, don't leave anything in your car. And again, don't leave anything in your car that tells people where you live. If someone breaks in your car, you've just given them information and told them, I'm at the mall, I'm not home. So these are just some tips that you can do to keep yourself safe, keep your property safe, and help us so that we don't have to keep taking these crimes that are easily preventable. Help us, folks, to help you. Okay, don't leave. We'll be right back, and we'll be with our guest, Jennifer Moore from the Utima Foundation for the Kids. Come back. You're watching West Bloomfield 911 on Civic Center TV, a service of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission. For more information or to watch episodes on demand, visit civiccentertv.com slash WB911. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Yatuma's Foundation for the Kids brings tenderness to tragedy. 
for the families of children who have lost one or both of their parents, providing assistance through partnerships with businesses and social service organizations the foundation strives to help each family through the difficult phases of grieving and recovery. For more information on how you can help, visit ForTheKidsFoundation.org or call 888-987-KIDS. And we are back here at beautiful West Bloomfield 911 Studios, and we're glad to have you. I'm glad you stayed with us because we have a very special guest, Jennifer Moore, Program Director for Yatuma Foundation for the Kids. Jennifer, glad to have you on the air. Glad to be here. And, um, you know, as I said earlier, it was good to put a face to the voice because we've spoken on the phone quite a bit, yes. but we never met yeah. in person. Mm -hmm. And um, we met, just so the folks know, we met uh, when uh, Yatuma Foundation for the Kids uh, reached out to, to us so that uh, you could help and lend assistance to the family of Sergeant Patrick O'Rourke who was killed in the line of duty. And you guys were absolutely phenomenal. So um, I know that you offered, uh, the, the organization offered a trip to uh, Florida for Mrs. Amy O'Rourke and her children. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thank you very much for your kindness, for extending the help that you did to the family. That was Norman's honor. He was very happy to do so on behalf of the foundation. Well, thank you. And, and also, uh, uh, I know he was involved also in, in getting a sculpture to, uh, yes. to Mrs. O'Rourke. Yes. It was uh, out of mm -hmm. wood. I don't, don't know the sculptor's name, but it was a police officer with wings kind of protecting a, a little yes. Dutch kid. So mm -hmm. you guys have been phenomenal. And um, when you see Norman, please thank him on behalf of uh, Mrs. Amy O'Rourke and the West yes. Bloomfield Police He will Department. say it's not necessary, but I will tell him. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you um, have been working uh, with them, well, not all that long, since yeah. April of 2013. <laughs> yeah. But you have been uh, very instrumental for some time in, in social work and yes. helping people. So <laughs> why don't you talk a little bit about that, because you originally graduated from Wayne State University, mm -hmm. which is where my son graduated from. And uh, you also got a master's in social work from EMU. Mm -hmm. And I went there for a little while till they did a background check on me and kicked me out. But that's <laughs> another story. So. Why don't you talk a little bit about how you got involved in helping people? Well, I grew up in the Salvation Army. We were just talking yes. about that. Um, and that is just one of the tenets. It goes hand in hand, heart to God, hand to man, social services. I like that. That was just, that was a motto for a long time. That's yeah. still the one I use. Um, so it was just a way of life. Mm -hmm. um, my father is a um, Detroit fire chaplain. He was the disaster services coordinator for the Salvation Army for a long time. Okay. My mother taught the what other churches would call faith formation for 25 years. It was just works and acts went very hand in hand, hand in hand, helping others. Um, so I got my degree in social work. I used to want to be a special education teacher. I had a very dear friend named Julie with Down syndrome, and I wanted to work with kids with Down syndrome. And I was at a Salvation Army Center in Brightmore and decided that I wanted to be- In Detroit. In Detroit. Yep. Yes. Brightmore. Yep. No, a very exactly special so. part of Detroit. Yes, yes. yes. I'm very familiar with that. Um, and decided, you know, I think I want to do a little bit more. I want to be a social worker. And I never changed my major. I went to Wayne State, got my bachelor's, went to Eastern, got my master's, um, mm -hmm. seven and a half months pregnant when I graduated. Wow. Um, and then worked from home doing special needs adoption and foster care with the state for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then when I re-entered the workforce, there was an opportunity at Utumas. And you have um, worked in some, some rather difficult areas, yes. like we said, Brightmore, mm -hmm. which is a very challenging area mm -hmm. to be. And now you're working for Yatuma Foundation. Why don't you go a little bit into, uh, well, I guess, what, what drew you to the organiza organization? And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, how that organization began. Um, in foster care, um, my experience is childhood grief and loss. And a lot of people think that because children have little bodies that their feelings are smaller. They're not. No. It's just their capacity to understand those feelings is different. Um, I needed to enter the workforce full time. At the time, I was working 24-7 crisis, um, which was rewarding, but it was incredibly disruptive to my family. Right. And um, where did you do that, man? I did that with um, the Post Adoption Resource Centers with Judson Center. Okay. Um, and they are services all over the state provided to people who have adopted through the state of Michigan. 
um, who maybe happily ever after didn't quite happen after the adoption. Yeah. And there's some problems. And there's help available for them. Um, and I got a call from a recruiter that this Yatumas Foundation for the Kids, never had heard of it before, um, had an opening and did I want to interview? So I Googled it and I looked at it and I said, yeah, I'd like to interview there. Wow. Um, the reason I selected Yatumas more than, um, I had about three offers on the table, was meeting the families. I interviewed um, with a wonderful board member. I interviewed with Norman's aunt and mm -hmm. then I interviewed with Norman himself. And it's this family that went through a horrible thing um, who certainly has the means to walk away and tell everybody else, find your own way. Right. They haven't done that. They have chosen to stay in grief. They have chosen to stay in loss to help other families in ways that they were not helped when they needed it. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because I know, uh, as you said, they, uh, this came about because of their grief and loss. What happened to the Yatuma family, and I guess to Norman in particular, that drew him into creating this organization? Um, 20 years ago in March, um, Norman was a 20-year-old high school, I'm sorry, college student in Indiana. I was the 20-year-old high school. <laughs> yeah. You got that confused. Yes. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> he received a call that his father had been killed, shot and killed in Detroit. The homicide has never been solved. Did um, his father have a, a business in Detroit? I believe so, yes. Okay. And um, he was shot and he was killed and um, left um, four boys and a wife um, living a pretty comfortable, somewhat affluent lifestyle. And within two weeks of his father's death, they went from that security to not knowing how their bills were gonna be paid, to having lawsuits filed against them, to having all kinds of things happening from people who they thought would help them. Yeah. All the while trying to get their head around this, the fact that their father was dead. Right, it was violent death. A violent death, a sudden death, there's grief, there's right. loss. His brothers are much younger than him. Um, so he was the oldest? He was the oldest. Um, in a proudly Chaldean family, and his impulse was to get home and and start taking care of the family, but he did manage to do both. Um, his mother, Andrea, is one of the strongest women I know. Wow. And she just stepped up in ways that I don't think she knew she had, and she took care of her boys, and she raised four very strong, very good men mm -hmm. who married beautiful, very strong, very good women um, who can keep up with these very strong men, and together, 10 years ago on Father's Day while talking about their dad, um, at Norman's Kitchen Table, they came up with the idea of how could we help? They discovered going through their dad's things, just files and thank you cards from people, of people that he had helped doing the same thing, not in an organized fashion, but just right. people that he heard of in the neighborhood that were having a hard time that he'd reached out to. Um, people would say to Norman, you know, your dad helped me once. He didn't know that. And the foundation was born around a kitchen table. It was all volunteer until very recently. Wow. Um, and it, it's a family organization. When we're doing our big galas, um, Norman's gracious wife, Nicole, is right down there with us. The girls come in, they're so fun to have around. And you know they're there till two o'clock in the morning. Not the girls, but mom is. Right. She takes them home, puts them to bed, and she comes back. So this organization that uh, has uh, kind of Norman's stamp on it, mm -hmm actually grew out of the generosity of his father. Of his father, absolutely. Oh. It is, in all of our mission statement, it is truly in loving memory and honor of Manuel Utuma. Well, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about what now the Utuma Foundation does. Now, they, they're designated help, mm -hmm. and people understand a little bit, they, they did help, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Amy and the children uh, mm -hmm. by uh, giving them a, little, a distraction mm -hmm. by going to yeah. uh, Florida, to uh, mm -hmm. Disney World. Uh, they gave this gift Mm -hmm. uh, through sculptures, but they also, uh, I know, made a financial donation mm -hmm. to help them through the difficult times. Yep. So what are some of the things that Utuma Foundation does? That, that's not strictly it by no, itself. No, that's not it. And, and with respect to everybody's privacy concerned, um, we help all families, um, be it the police officer, um, be it other families who lose things, mm -hmm. who are maybe on the other side of the law. Right. Um, a, a grieving child is a grieving child. Yeah, the, the kid is an innocent victim. Right, and, and we help, Norman always says, we want to help all kids yeah. um, who have lost a parent. Um, we offer counseling. We, our mission is to bring tenderness to tragedy and to help in time turn that tragedy into triumph. 
Absolutely. and it takes time. Mm -hmm. But if we can soften the blow for a little bit, if we can provide a distraction, we can't bring mom, dad, we can't bring dad back. Right. But we can provide a distraction, we can take the stress off mom over the rent payment that's due or help with utilities, help with groceries, help with tutoring. Mm -hmm. um, take some of the stress off the surviving parent or grandparent so that they can give the hugs and they can give the love and they can do the things they need to do that only they can do. Mm -hmm. um, we offer a lot of counseling. Um, I have several families, and Andrea has done it for years, of unofficial after hours calls where the kids have gone to bed and the mask of I'm okay has been on too long right. and mom, grandma, husband needs to take it off and say, okay, I'm not okay. Right. And they call and we talk until they are. Um, we offer social outings once a month where we get together. Um, this week we're going to Belle Isle the Tigers were so generous to us this year. We went three times. And we get the children together and we just have fun. We don't talk about everybody there has lost a parent. But I catch them looking around and, and saying, hey, I'm not the only kid this has happened to. Right. Because many times they are the only kid in class. Yes. They are the only kid in the neighborhood. Yeah. So and then it's sometimes special. The kids, other kids can be cruel without even knowing mm -hmm. it, too. So. I have seen kids can be cruel. And then sometimes kids can say the most comforting things mm. because there's no ego. They're yeah. not saying what they need to say to hear their own voice. They're right. saying what they feel. Um, but sometimes children, it's almost like they think it's contagious. I don't want to get too close to that kid because they're the ones whose dad died. Like somehow that could happen to me. Right. Um, so we provide just a variety of services. I have read files where we sent a cosmetology student over to teach a dad how to braid hair. Wow. Um, we have sent college over to teach a mom how to mow the lawn mm. and maybe do it for a month or two. So when, when you offer the counseling and you offer these services, mm -hmm. these aren't necessarily people that are on staff by the Utuma Foundation, but you have connections throughout the community of people that will help? Mm -hmm. we, did. we need more. Um, we need more um, dentists who are willing to see our kids. We need more landscapers, um, house repair guys who are willing to help us out. But yes, we do have um, the Utuma Foundation has been blessed with wonderful friends who are very ge generous to us and will just call. And sometimes people just say, hey, I read about you on the website. I saw you on a show. That sounds great. I want to be involved with that because we are so unique. Right. I know of one other foundation in Michigan who offers services specifically to children who have lost a parent. Wow. Now, yourself, your, your title is Program Director. but. That really is kind of a misnomer in a sense. What is it? That I know, like you've told me, while I was down talking to these, these, this family and these kids. So you don't just set and set up shows and no events. Um, you, you my have, no. you wear different hats. Yes, my primary purpose, first and foremost, is to be there for the families. I'm a social worker. I'm trained in grief and loss. Um, I love to work with children. Um, I have a healthy respect for children and their intellect mm -hmm. and their emotions and their capacity to feel um, and have some education in where their brain is and where their development is and what, how to help them process everything that's going on. Right. Um, so I am very blessed with an employer and a board who is passionate about children and that the needs of the children and the family come first. So I'm there for the families primarily but in order to make a utility bill, I have to have money to make sure. that utility bill. So there is some fundraising involved. Um, there is some, we have the gala every year. This was my first year, it was beautiful, that raised money for our families. Um, we have local restaurants and we welcome that. Who will say, hey, we'll make it you two a night. We'll give 20% of our profits, pass out your flyers. Um, so I do a little of that. Um, we're starting to branch into some support groups trying to get more in touch with police departments, trying to work more in the schools to educate people. This is how you comfort a child. Yeah. This is what you say. This is what you don't say. Um, and work from there. So yeah, I do, it depends on what day of the week it is. Yeah. So now you don't just do, uh, you're not just working nine to five and have, uh, have it easy on the weekends all the time. You're putting in a lot of time to help all these folks. Yeah, um, I'm blessed that because it's such a family organization, the outing on Saturday, I can bring my own children mm -hmm. and I'm able to teach them and explain to them, you have a healthy mom, you have a healthy dad. These kids, for whatever reason, they yeah, lost their mom yeah. and dad and, and they learn empathy that way. And yeah, they're just like regular kids. And you know, we went to the zoo, we, we had fun. They had too much fun. We had to you know, get them off the hay bales. <laughs> they, 
they they're normal kids. It's it's a good place to be. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't feel like work. Right, right. Well, now let me ask you. There's a uh, you have this uh, phrase in here uh, for the kids by the kids. Why don't you talk about that a little? That bit? is our new favorite thing, and we're so excited about it. We. we I'm sorry, go ahead. We have started a junior advisory board, and we had 17 high schoolers and one college kid show up and one middle schooler show up. And since then, I've had six other inquiries. And any middle schooler, if mom and dad think they're ready for that, high schooler, college student can be part of our junior advisory board. We're going to get these, these kids are dynamic. They have fundraising ideas, they have ideas for the kids. One of the teenage girls came up with a spa night for the surviving moms. Maybe the boys could play with the girls and, and we could give moms manicures and pedicures and she knows a masseuse who would bring her a chair. Um, they want to help us raise funds. They want to go out there and they want to help. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just phenomenal. Some of these kids have lost parents. A lot of these kids haven't. They, they just want to help and they have this energy and this empathy you know, for other kids, and they, they really want to make a difference for someone. Wow, that's interesting. Now, can you tell me how big is uh, Utuma Foundation been around for how many years now? Um, officially 10. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I've spoken to several individuals over there, mm -hmm. such as yourself. Is the Utuma Foundation also work with other charitable organizations? I know you have other groups that help yep. you with social work and mm -hmm. maybe teaching a father to braid hair and that. Yep. Do you branch out and work with other social aid, uh, charitable organizations to kind of lean on each other? We do and we are. In fact, I was going to hit you up after the segment. Um, we are working right now, we just started a partnership with the ALS Association of Michigan, which mm -hmm. is unfortunately a terminal disease, usually within 6 to 18 months. And we started some support groups for kids. Um, kids often want to protect the adults in their lives, yes. so they don't often say how they're really feeling. Mm -hmm. um, they don't need to protect me. I'm not losing my husband or my wife. They can talk to me. Um, we have recently been invited to start a partnership with Mothers Demanding Justice. And what is that? Um, they are a brand new organization, and they just invited um, some of our families from the foundation um, to deal with families who have dealt with a violent crime where the perpetrator has either not been caught or has been caught but not prosecuted or maybe has even been convicted but they're still needing support. It's Loss of any kind is horrible and it's painful but mm -hmm. to know that your loved one is gone because somebody chose to take them is a whole nother set of loss. Well absolutely and uh, I, well that is so true because I know not only with Patrick of course but uh, uh, I had a cousin also who was killed in Detroit uh, many years ago but you know, he was in the prime of his life 21 years old so mm -hmm. that, is, that is very difficult for a family to yeah. handle. Uh, death is a part of life, but when it's violent death and or someone's taken in the prime of life or so unexpectedly, like mm -hmm. Norman's dad or my cousin, that's uh, it's hard for a lot of family members yes. to handle and to comprehend that. And uh, Norman's father's killer was never found. No. Same with my cousin, his killer was never found. So uh, I think that leaves a gaping hole in a sense for a lot of the family members as well. It does. And um, Norman, when he talks to our kids, I have the degree, I have the training, I have the um, book knowledge, but I have a wonderful life. I have two wonderful parents who live 15 minutes from me. He's got the experience. Right. He knows what it's like to have somebody say, Dad's gone. Right, right. And the kids, they click with that. When he gets down at their eye level, they click with that. Right. And, and there's like a connection. Absolutely. Now, Jennifer, we only have a moment left, so very quickly, would you like to give a phone number? I that would. people can contact right. the Tuma Foundation if they would like to help? Absolutely. Because you are a 501c3. We correct? are a 501c3, and so. we need all kinds of help, and we want to give help. Our phone number is 888-987-KIDS, KIDS. Absolutely. If you don't have numbers on your dial for your cell phone, that is 5437. And our website is forthekidsfoundation.org. Thank you, Jennifer. Very good, thank folks. Thank you for having if, us. Thank you very much, yes. folks. If you can, please uh, help this organization. They're a wonderful group. I can attest to that through, uh, unfortunately, our experiences with you guys as well. Folks, if you would, please remember in your thoughts and prayers a great American hero who was killed in the line of duty. In this case, we are talking about Correctional Officer Clarence Tariq Hammond III who was killed on January 14, 2012, and he worked for the Michigan Department of Corrections. You may remember this. This received a lot of press locally. 
Uh, correctional officer Hammond was shot and killed in a botched robbery attempt as he arrived home at an apartment complex in Madison Heights at about 12.30 a.m. Officer Hammond was still in uniform. He had pulled into his complex with his girlfriend into a parking spot next to a van with an open door. A subject immediately exited the van and attempted to rob the couple. When he observed Officer Hammond, he struck him in the head with the gun and then shot him. The suspect fled the scene remains at large. Officer Hammond worked for six years. He was only 33 years old and he was survived by two young sons. So please remember this great American hero, Correctional Officer Clarence Tariq Hammond III of the Michigan DOC. And once again, we would like to thank our guest, Jennifer Moore, Program Director for the Utuma Foundation for the Kids. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you for all the work that you do. Folks, thank you for watching West Bloomfield 911. You can catch us on Civic Center TV, or if you can't catch us on the telly, civiccentertv.com. Take care of each other. Be safe. Remember tomorrow's promise to no one. We'll see you again on West Bloomfield tonight.